Hi guys, welcome to Reddit Rabbit Hole. Today, we are looking at the question, what is one experience you think every single human should have? Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the video so YouTube gods are pleased. Without further ado, let's get started. Fuck, I had a job I loved once. They gave me free reign and trusted my expertise. What a fucking novelty, having that sort of trust and lack of micromanagement. At one point, my boss pulled me aside and chastised me for asking him permission for something that I wanted to do. Listen, the booth is your domain. Do whatever the hell you want. I trust your decisions. Quit asking me if you can do stuff. My head about exploded. Best job I've ever had, easily. I was fishing in a fjord in Denmark, where I live, very early on a warm morning. I was in my waders and out in the water, which was completely still. It was a serene moment, where it was just me and beautiful nature. Suddenly a roe deer emerged onto the beach and proceeded to go in the water. It started jumping, running, and splashing around, obviously just playing and having a good time. Ah. Proceeded to fish and do my thing, while the deer played behind me, sometimes no more than ten meters away from me. I think it didn't see me as a threat because I was out in the water, where humans don't normal go. In those maybe fifteen minutes every worry I had in this world faded away, completely unimportant. There was only summer and nature and joy. It was a profound experience that will stay with me for the rest of my life. Edit. This was maybe twenty years ago. Yet I remember it in vivid detail. I played magic the gathering against a person I'd never met before, and his reactions to all of my plays were utterly priceless. Like, he was losing badly, and he acted like I just stabbed him, but jokingly. When he lost, he lost so graciously it felt like I'd lost and he won. So we played another match using a joke deck he put together. Turn 1, he played a very expensive to buy sought after card, turn 2 and turn 3, he set up his deck's win condition, and on turn 4 he attacked for 6, then doubled the power, then used a card called Fling to deal that damage again. All within seconds, I lost without even knowing what I could have done to prevent it. My knee-jerk reaction was, what's the meaning of this dickotronic f asterisk asterisk ketri? Man laughed so hard he was in tears, literally crying, red-faced and out of breath. It got to the point when he couldn't even breathe in properly so he was laughing breathlessly and silently, just shuddering like an utter lunatic. My lifelong wish is that one day I can laugh so near fatally hard colon D. Yes. My city was close to the path, but I think it was going to only be like 95-97% of totality. My boyfriend and I decided to drive two hours north to be right under the path of totality, and when the moment came, I can't describe it. It was unlike anything I've ever experienced. There was this moment where everyone laughed and cheered, and then just fell silent was truly awe-inspiring. I asked some of my friends who stayed in town how the view was, and all of them just kind of shrugged and said like it was cool or it was fine. You wouldn't expect 3-5% to make that big of a difference, but I just know by their reactions, they didn't see what we saw. From someone that didn't have supportive parents. Special thank you to all the adults, older siblings, older friends, that offer support to kids who can't hit it anywhere else. All of your hugs, listening, teaching us how to file insurance claims, teaching us that the world isn't a dark, cruel place aren't forgotten. No matter where the kids of shitty parents end up, know that if you did your best to love and support them while you were in their life, you gave us more than our parents ever did. Thank you. P.S. to my fourth grade teacher that worked with my best friends, made sure I had a going away party when my parents moved, with pictures, my classmates, and giving me an address book at school for my friend's numbers with your phone number hidden inside if I ever needed it. Thank you. I didn't realize what you were doing until I was an adult. Your proof someone saw how they treated me. If you see this, somehow, you did the right thing. I hope you're okay. If I could contact you to thank you, I would. This, I had to move in my 30s to a new city, and it was only over time that I developed good friends again, starting with one decent friend and then being absorbed into his friend group a few others too, but mainly this one, Circle. Then a few years ago, my marriage fell apart and I had to move. I was broke and needed real help. And all these people turned up to get me set up. Made sure that I knew it would be okay. Around that time, they all started describing each other as family, myself included. Family are the people who want to make sure you are well looked after. Relatives are the people with whom you share DNA. Sometimes those circles overlap. 
sometimes they don't. Controversial opinion if given the option, I would have moved back to my hometown in a heartbeat. Only problem is in the last 10 years it's expanded like crazy, what was once farmland are neighborhoods for the upper class, and where we used to go mud riding is the apartment complex. The most heartbreaking part of all is the beach is gone. When I was a kid we drive to the beach, and it was a popular tourist spot, but there was miles of sand and water and some parking. I went there last year it's all private property for hotels it nearly made me a grown-ass man cry realizing it's never gonna go back, and what was once at our secret spot to avoid crowds is now a crowded area, simply because they can't build a hotel there. Sitting in a courtroom for a day. I worked in the Canadian criminal justice system, and let me tell you, it's a humbling experience to say the least. Growing up, I was obsessed with true crime, still am, and I thought by my millionth Dateline episode, I had a grasp on how justice was served. Boy, was I wrong. I was lucky enough also to start my career in the legal system by clerking in a domestic violence courtroom, as well as providing victim services. I learned a lot about the shortcomings of the system and the toll it takes on victims, how we aren't providing them with the support they so deeply deserve and need to carry them through some of the roughest times in their lives. I also learned how incredibly blind the system is to its offenders. This may cause backlash, and I'm not looking to excuse anyone's behavior. But it is a fact that the vast majority of offenders were victims first and we often overlook this. I've also been shocked by people getting released on bail for horrific offenses and equally shocked by people being held for petty theft of food slash clothing as a necessity. If you want to go into a deep dark hole of anger, check out bail legislation. There are a lot more people out on bail than you think. This kind of makes it all sound dark and dreary and not like something you'd want to do, but being immersed in court has truly given me wider perspective, greater empathy, and has also made me check my privilege a thousand times over. Being present during a victim's testimony and an offender's history being recited, along with all the other mind-boggling intricacies of the system really makes you think twice. Since the day I started working, they're the only thing I've ever thought is man, everyone needs to come sit here. Maybe the world would be a better place. It's weird because the justice system is truly just a legal system, and no punishment can ever make up for a victim's hardship, and no program or treatment may ever reconcile an offender's past, but listening and being present during the process can certainly understanding of a bigger, more human-centered picture. Working in retail slash healthcare so you can learn basic empathy and truly see how horrible human beings can truly be to each other at it. Why was it expecting this to get a lot of replies, just to clarify don't mean everyone should have to do it in a long-term sense, everyone should just see what it's like. Believe me, I understand losing empathy as someone who's desperately trying to get away from his ER job. I guess what I mean is you learn how to treat other service workers and understand how hard a job like that it is while also seeing other people come and having the worst day of their lives and learning to appreciate what you have. At least that's how I see it definitely think every politician should be required at least two years of that. Also shout out to all other service workers who deal with people all day long, food service ups, postal, call center act. We all deserve better. Psychedelics. They give you new perspectives on your life and goals that I don't think you can get any other way. I know this sounds cliche, but I would have never believed it if I hadn't experienced it myself. After taking 60 mg of DMT, I was more calm and less anxious, I stopped caring about a lot of frivolous things and focused on what matters to me and any subsequent psychedelics I used, mostly LSD at low doses of 75 UG. Reinforce that. It truly helped me become the person I always wanted to be and helped me shave off a lot of trauma slash baggage. It truly feels magical. I wasn't a drug person, barely smoke weed, don't drink alcohol at all, five times a week in the gym. I watch everything I eat etc. and I still don't beside the occasional psychedelics trip when I have a weekend free, and it's been a while, last one was I think two years ago. I did time the military, lots of mortars going off, gunfights, and a couple IED blew up my truck. None of that gave me the feeling of I'm fucked we trained for that, we expected it. A few years after all of that I was mowing the lawn state side and it started to rain. I was stubborn and thought, I'm almost done just another 10 minutes. In that time, lightning struck so close behind me that the reflection off my house was blinding and the crack of the bolt felt like it was ripping or tearing the inside of my chest apart. It was deafening. I have never been so afraid in my life. It was as if I was a little boy again and wanted to cry. 
I was absolutely terrified. In college I delivered pizza. One night at about 2 a.m. on my way to deliver to a party house, I had a killer headache and wanted the night to end, so I drove slow, more time equals less deliveries equals less money. Literally no other delivery driver goes slow on purpose at my store ever. But as I was driving I noticed feet crouched behind a parked truck, hiding from traffic. Lady leaped out into traffic in front of me from behind that truck, to kill herself, because I happened to be going five under the speed limit, and somehow happened to see her feet before she jumped, and I happened to have had new brakes and two newish tires I stopped so suddenly that all the pizza slid in my dashboard. I missed hitting this woman by about a foot and a half. I didn't know what to do, but I gave her a ride and some ruined pizza lol. I listened to her while I drove her, she mostly cried and babbled about her boyfriend. I took her to a gas station nearby that always had cops on duty, patrolling for drunk college kids. I told her the cops can call someone or take her somewhere safe. She didn't thank me, but she wanted to pay, I refused. She didn't have money but reached in her purse and grabbed about 20 big lighters and dropped them on my center console and said here, have these. I still have a bunch of those lighters, and I don't even smoke. I always think back about that night and have no takeaway other than what the fuck was that all about. So, yeah, this was a life-threatening moment, but just not for me. I can't imagine how fucked I would have felt if I had hit her. I try to calculate the odds of it all. I'm usually speeding that time of night for more tip money, and my reaction slash breaking time must have been near perfect. It wouldn't have been my fault if I had hit her, I guess, but I still would have been fucked up, I think. During the lockdown, I had a lot of time to spend just thinking. No substances or timetables to distract me. Just me and my thoughts, and one blue summer's day, I was taking my bins down to the end of our driveway. We live on a farm, and I found myself staring at the hills surrounding my home, and as I looked I saw the clouds moving behind the hills and the sky. Seemed so large and beautiful. I took a second just to watch the clouds roll gently by and to listen to the breeze, and I had the clearest thought I've had in my life. This is all for me. I didn't quite know what it meant, and a few seconds later was laughing at how arrogant it seemed. But I couldn't shake that thought that the view I was seeing was mine only. I didn't take any pictures or videos, I just looked at it and let it live in me. Seeing wild megafauna in the wild. Bears, elephants, rhinos, giraffes. More specifically, people really should try places like African wildlife reserves. I think that many people are disconnected from nature because they do not find it exciting and the dearth of large megafauna in the local region may be a large reason why. There is nothing like watching a herd of elephants walking through the bush, youngsters playing happily. Nothing like the beautiful way rhinos express themselves in their movement and in the way they interact with one another and other creatures. Nothing like watching lions on the move. Nothing like seeing five or six giraffes, their heads peeking out from among the treetops, perhaps turned towards you, the source of the sound they are hearing. Nothing like the thrill of spotting the rarely seen leopard, which is the quintessential cat. Nothing like seeing the dazzling variety of antelopes from a land to duikers in Steenbach, each with its own particular way of living. Nothing like hearing the sounds of the African night, such as the unusual wine laugh of a spotted hyena as it paces back and forth on the other side of the camp fence, its eyes gleaming in the torchlight as it waits for food scraps. Nothing like the calm of the evening dusk as the sun sets while the hippos snort and make ready to make their nightly forays on a land. Places like the African wilderness is a place where nature is as real as it can be, where the wild gets right into your very blood and makes you want to return again and again. Work in retail with the public directly, in a lower, read subservient position. I do not at all feel like it should be subservient, but let's face it, it often is. Forget mandatory military service or whatever. Have people by the time they leave high school do three months in a retail-slash-restaurant environment. And no, not at your parents' place, not as a supervisor, etc. Just as the new person at entry level. I'd like to think that those lessons would stay with you even if later in life you're some neurosurgeon who is well, well compensated. You would some some understanding of what it's like being 17 and dealing with Karen Von Unreasonable the IVTH. For Americans, boot camp-slash-basic training-slash-service in any of the military branches. A lot of you assholes need to be put in your place. Especially if you are from a not-so-diverse area, it can really open your eyes to the different cultures of your compatriots. Let alone the aspect of traveling the world and experiencing the different food, social customs, and even weather. 
My service was one of the best worst experiences of my life. The days were really long, but the weeks and months flew by. I met some of the most amazing people, gained lifelong friendships, and when I separated I got my degree, debt-free. It may be hard for some to understand, but it also forced me to grow up. I was a piece of trash, going nowhere guy when I was 18. After boot camp slash basic training, I was a man, in the general sense of the term. Confidence, eye contact, calling people out on their bullshit, solving issues instead of just complaining, etc. Anyway, long story short, I was in for six years and I learned a lifetime of lessons in my small amount of time. If I could go back, I absolutely would do it again. Psilocybin mushrooms, unless you or your family have a history of psychological problems, like bipolar disorder, psychosis, or schizophrenia. It's changed my, and a lot of others, life, and helped me mature and really dig deep into my subconscious to work out problems I didn't realize I had. Stuff like not stressing about the small things in life, being kinder to others, even if they're dicks because they could just be having a bad day, and worked on my depression. Came out on the other side of the trip as a much better person. Plus, if you don't want to fully trip, 3-4 gram dose, Many studies have shown that microdosing.1.25 g has a lot of the same effects and you won't really feel anything. Kinda feels like drinking a cup of coffee and you're able to think outside the box a bit better. It also creates new synapse connections, which helps you learn new tasks at a faster rate, which is probably why all the Silicon Valley tech CEOs slash workers use psilocybin. Financial freedom. I don't worry if my car breaks down or if I have to go to the hospital or if the furnace breaks down, or if the AC goes out. Are all of those annoying? Sure, but I just pay and move about life. I do want to make it clear, I've been there. Having to borrow money to buy a used tire, only being able to afford food by putting it on a credit card, which I only had with the 900% qualifier, was even homeless for a bit, not living on the street, but sleeping in my car some nights or crashing on a friend's couch other nights. The phrase money doesn't buy happiness, was created for two distinct groups of people. Those that were in dire situations financially like myself or those that have so much money that they can hop on a private jet. I can tell you with 100% confidence that life has a lot less stressors when you have money. Yeah, shitty things are going to happen. Part of life. Those shitty things, like car breakdowns, major appliance issues, and of course things like relationship breakups and death, are going to happen to everyone. Even take the most extreme, death. Would it make you feel better if those two days you took off work, viewing and then funeral, could possibly cause you to get evicted because you didn't make enough for rent? I can't imagine so. Back in my early 20s before all of us had kids or were married my close circle of friends, about eight or nine of us, would gather at one of our houses on New Year's Eve. About 10.30 or so we would drink shroom tea and eat a few extra caps. By the time midnight rolled around we were tripping our respective tits and balls off. We would engage in some of the greatest conversations, take a walk around the neighborhood enjoying the fireworks, or just veg watching some anime. It was an amazing way to end one year and begin the new one. We all would wake up on New Year's Day, cook breakfast, and enjoy the mosas, while reminding each other of the prior night's happenings. I miss that tradition. I haven't done shrooms in over a decade, and have no way of finding anyone who may have any here where I live now. I have considered cultivating my own, and have browsed the shrooms subreddit, but I doubt in my abilities to do so. The fact that this isn't higher on the list only speaks to how many more people need to experience it. Honestly, it should be top of the list. Like, you think looking at the stars on a clear night is cool. Well, it is. But in comparison to shrooms, it's about a 2 slash 10 on the wow scale. Even better, do both at the same time. I don't normally enjoy drugs. I mean, if I take some MDMA or something off, I'll enjoy it but I won't take it due to the next day downer and so on. It's not worth it for me. Weed is boring and makes me either sick slash want to go to bed. Coke is for turning people into motorman dickheads. But magic mushrooms, few lad. Experiencing oneness, taking part in the universe's perspective. Absolutely mind-blowing. If you haven't been there, the only way to express it is to let you know you are missing out on a fundamentally different way of looking at the world, that if you ever get it, you wouldn't want to lose it it would be a regression. Also, either side of these big life-changing moments is an absolutely hilarious blast of a time with your friends. And zero come down or hangover. Couldn't recommend it more. I'd say do about 5-6 grams and use a weighing scales.
one little innocent looking bit left in or out can be a lot of a difference. Leaving you either way short and a little disappointed or way over and not mentally prepared. Thank you everyone for watching. Please like and subscribe to make YouTube gods happy. See you guys in another video.